So filling in this about page is very useful because these are keywords and such where you'll get found. Um, but really, you've got other things to work on a little bit more with more effort. So wherever you're at, click on Timeline. You should be on Page, Timeline. This takes you back to this screen. This is basically what people will see when they find your page. And Facebook has its own little search box up on the top. This is where you can search for, let's say, chocolate. There's a page on Facebook about chocolate, and it has 19 million likes. There's also Eclipse Chocolate, which is a place on Fern Street. Um, it's a gastro pub. It's got 5,000 likes, 11,000 check-ins, which in theory means that 11,000 people went to Eclipse Chocolate and clicked check-in on their Facebook app. You get that check-in if you create a Facebook page with an address, with a location. You don't check in on a non-existent place. But searching up here can give me pages, places, people, events. So these keywords and whatever you fill in about your site and its name and everything could help you get found up here. And let's say I've got a company, Victor's Bakery, just for fun. Up on the search box here, I'm going to start typing Victor's Bakery. That comes with Victor's Bakery in San Francisco, Victor's Bakery in Manitoba, Victor's Bakery in Michigan, Las Vegas, but where's mine? Well, this then is the challenge of um, getting found on Facebook because there's probably not the, just these four Victor's Bakeries. There's, you know, a hundred more, perhaps. This is just a preview. I can click on Find More Results and it'll give me even more results. So, lots of Victor's Bakeries out there. And it mixes in other weird names and such, too. But, um, then after we assume that we create the page, it's then a matter of getting, getting people to find us. Um, so that's what we'll be talking about the rest of the of the day. Um, here on the timeline of the page, we have this button which is relatively new, and this is very useful. This is Create Call to Action, CTA, or Call to Action, CTA, Call to Action. This is jargon that you hear a lot in marketing, like web marketing. CTA, what's your CTA? What's your call to action? A call to action is something that calls to your users to take some action. So let's explore this a moment. If you click Create Call to Action, and you don't get that call to action if you don't have your page set up as a business page, because there's no CTA for a person. This and many reasons are, are there why you want a page, not a personal, personal page. You don't want a page for friends. You want a page for likes. Again, I'll explore that fully in a moment. But create call to action, add a button to get people to take an action from your page such as shop or sign up. So I click that, what will it look like on a website, on the iPhone and the Android phone, and how would you like to set this up? You can have a button that says contact us, and then an address. So let's say I have picture.com slash contact.html, right? I link it directly to my contact page of my website if I chose contact us. Other possible verbs that I have here, book now, call now, if I've got call now, then okay, put in my phone number. This will be very useful because then when someone's on the mobile device, right here, Android and iPhone, they'll see call now. They tap that, it'll call them on their phone, from their phone. Send me a message, use an app, play a game, sign up, watch a video, So I have these various calls to action. Cause a person to do something. And there's a few different options. Notice, unfortunately, there isn't one that I can create right now, like, um, you know, buy this week's product. There's no, you know, 10% off today. 
there's not that kind of action. There's these ones that are, it's limited to these, but these can be most likely what you need. And if, um, <clears throat> if none of these are exactly what you're looking for, you still have the ability, even though it says shop now, you can put in a web address here directly to your specific coupon on your website or, or your sign up or, or whatever. So if you're able to create a call to action there, I would, maybe not right now, but I would create one. And if, you, if you're advanced enough that you, you're, you actually also have an app for your business, you can set this up so that it links to your specific app on the iPhone store and on the Android store. That of course means you need to have an app. So we have those different options. Book now. It's not actually that I create some sort of booking system in Facebook. It's still going to guide them back to my website. Again, you still need a website to accomplish most of these goals. So I'm going to cancel that, but I would want to create that as soon as I can. And if I do create something, I can, I can go back and change it whenever I want. I can change the CTA whenever I'd like. That's fine. After you create it, then when someone visits your page, it'll, it'll say contact us, and it might tell you, Facebook might tell you here and there about promote this, promote that. I'll explain what that means a little later. But then I would have a brand new contact us button if someone visits my page. I have other things I can do. I can test it. Is it really working? I can promote it. We'll talk about that later. View insights. How are people really using it? Are people clicking? Is it working? Or I can edit it. I can delete it. I can share my page. Yes. It doesn't appear to take you to the website. It takes you back to the, the same page on Facebook. After clicking test button? Well, I put sign up and then hit test button. Oh, well, now I did. <laughs> Never mind. Mm -hmm. I did We've got this page, and I can click share so that I can um, share it on my own timeline or I can share it on another page. This is tr this is what this is trying to do is to get me more likes because at the moment my first goal is to get 25 likes or 24 more so that I can claim my name. I can, from that other screen that I showed you, I can suggest it to my friends and family and then maybe I convince 25 friends to give me a like. I can then share it to my own timeline because I've got this business one and I have my own one. I can share it. I can share it to a friend's timeline if they have that allowed. I can put sort of like an ad for my page on their page. They might not like that. But I can do that. If I'm, part of, if I'm part of a group on Facebook, I can share it to the group. Or I can share this privately to people. Say, hey, Johnny, remember when I gave you that personal loan? Why not pay me back with a like? So you can do that. Yes. That's found right here under the share button. If you go back to page, then you should see share. I'm not going to focus on that too much. Uh, I've got other more, other more effective things to talk about in a moment. But this is one possibility to reach out to your current circle of friends, and maybe you get enough likes to then claim your name. Great. <clears throat> but then you're sharing this with your friends and family, and are you really going to build your business on the backs of your friends and family? So those likes that you have might not be that valuable. Um, you might also be tempted to, you saw some ad or something about, buy 1,000 likes for $5. Don't do those either, because they have no real value. They, they inflate your numbers artificially, and maybe you get enough so that you can claim your name, but that's still not worth it, because then you have a thousand fake accounts. These are not going to be real accounts that are really going to want your product. As we talked about Twitter and every other network, if I've got a thousand followers, one percent of that is ten people. Ten people that really might buy my product. If I've got a thousand likes, this is basically like a follow. So if I've got 1,000 likes, that's potentially 1,000 people that, uh, that, that like me, but really 10 that might follow through. From 1,000 likes, from 10,000 fake spam likes, that 1% that is still worthless. No one's going to buy 
your product. And I've seen this. There was a client that we had that, that then they broke up with us, and so they did it on their own. And then we saw uh, a little while later that they bought likes. And then suddenly they had 2,000 likes, but then that was so worthless because it didn't really result in any real business. So don't buy likes. <clears throat> Let's see over here on these three dots. What does this page look like as someone visiting it? Not as myself, because you see it's slightly different than your users. So you can preview it there. There it is. Add to favorites again, but I said don't even do that. Invite your friend. That's another way. Suggest the page, which is the same as share, basically. Create another page. What I do have to say, though, this is very confusing here. Let's say you are going to create another page. I would not create another page from within a page, because it looks like you can have pages creating pages. And what will happen here, then, is when you try to switch through them up here, they're not all going to be visible. This is very weird. If I'm Victor, my main account, I might not see every page I created. If I'm in a page and then create a page, I have to be in that page to see the pages. So be careful there. Don't create a page. Don't create more pages unless you know you're on your personal account. Now that I know I'm my regular self, then I'll create pages. But I can go into any of these businesses over here and create a page, and I will create a sub-page to this page. Very confusing. Yes? Now, when I created my page, it actually prompted me to log in as Normal. Sometimes it does that and that's good because it does want to guide you back to your main personal account to create more pages. Sometimes it doesn't and you might get a sub page of a main page. So it's good that it prompted you for that. Um, okay, let's actually create some content. Again, if I've got a brand new page, I don't have any likes. I don't have any followers. In a sense, for the moment, let me say that likes are like follows on Facebook, I mean follows on Twitter, or, or follows on, on Google Plus and such. That basically if someone has liked your page, it's like a follow, basically. There's nuances to that I'll get to. But basically that's why I want likes. Likes are followers. I don't have any followers, I don't have any likes, no one's going to see my page content, but I'm still going to create something. Three to five to ten things, just like on Twitter, like Google+, Plus, like I would do on Instagram, or Pinterest, or Peach, or any of these networks. I would create some content before trying to get followers to show something for their follow. So the way this works is, here we're on the page timeline, write something, either a status update, a photo or video update, or an event or milestone update. So on a basic status update, if I write something here, I can write any text, any amount of text length also in paragraphs and whatever. You're not limited to the space like Twitter. It's like Google Plus, you can write an essay. I wouldn't write an essay on Facebook either. I would write a little preview of it, and then a link back to my blog where they can read the whole essay. And so, same things that I talked about on Twitter and the other networks, write some sort of thing to catch attention, and usually you will have a link to go back to your main website for the full content. Yes? About writing only a preview? Yeah, it doesn't let you add a link in the in the oh, description. Okay. I would write one paragraph or two and then here is where you would really guide them back to your main website. Within this status I can write text, I can write links, I can attach a picture, I can attach an emotion, a location, add an expiration, and a target. So a lot of things that I can do here Let's say I'm going to write, hello everyone, happy to be, happy to finally be on Facebook. Again, what's the point? Always think about creating something that your customers would be interested in, at the very least to give you a like. <coughs> Maybe what you write will be good enough that you entice a comment, that's good, then that will help me find 
people that are really interested, maybe on a higher level, people will share it. I have two followers, but one of them has 500 friends, and then they shared it to their 500 friends, so now actually I reached 502 people. That of course takes practice to create great content, but it's going to be something that speaks to the audience, something that they will like or share or will impress them or interest them or want them to buy. So I'm going to say happy to finally be on Facebook. Um, like us for exclusive coupons every Tuesday. I can click the picture to attach a picture. I can attach multiple pictures. It'll create an album. I can attach what you're doing or how you're feeling. So let's say we are feeling excited. So I can simply say excited. Well, what's the point of this? This is... Um, more for this is to build a connection with your audience depending on how you're running your social media are you stoic are you fun and friendly if you're a stoic CPA I would be a little concerned that you're writing excited and happy and all that stuff I want you to do your job not to be cute with my money <laughs> so this is up to you to decide if you want to do this or not there's no good or bad about it but what this is, is actually pretty smart for people. When people write something and they choose this category or what you're watching, again, they're telling Facebook, I'm watching Star Wars. So then that's a particular audience to target because they've given away that information and I can craft something here that would fit that target audience and then I can target them right here. I can narrow the reach to those people that are interested in Star Wars. That's the point of all of that. You as a business don't need to use it. The regular people use it, and that's how you target them. I'll get to that in a moment. Add location. So again, this is most useful if you have a, a location. Diego continuing education so our campus here has a physical location so there that will be an active link so when someone is on their mobile device they can tap that and find a map they can get driving directions so if your location has been properly set up on Facebook you can attach your own location you can click to remove it Set date and time of your post. Um, this is a little bit different. This is not as useful as you would think. Um, this is mostly to, to set up um, sort of like back dating it as in, let's say we wanted to post a brand new um, a brand new uh, Happy New Year kind of post and we got around to it on January 2nd we could go in here and say actually we posted it on January 1st so we could backdate a post uh, no one will know I don't think it's bad it's you know you can decide to do that or not it doesn't really matter so you can backdate your posts saying you know, oh, actually, yeah, we did post something on December 31st about see you in the new year. Yeah, a month later. So yeah, you can do that. In a moment, we'll see about scheduling it. So I can backdate it, I can future date it. We'll see that in a moment. I have narrowed the, uh, narrow the audience, so here we go. So if I click on that, it's going to pop up this bigger screen here. This is where I can target this post to these people. 
whereas we did something like this for the whole page, which, uh, which, which is going to work well, but sometimes I might need to post to change this so that choose who can see this post in the newsfeed. If someone engages with this post, their friends may see it too. So engages. If someone likes this, comments, you probably see this. You log in and it says, Aunt Edna liked this. Or Cousin Floyd did that. You're going to see what other people on Facebook do. For us as a business, that's great. Because if Cousin Edna comes to my business and clicks like on something, then Cousin Janet could see it also. I could potentially reach more people. Friends of friends. And so if I do add interests here, chocolate, and I can add more than one. How many more will I reach at this point, perhaps? Ages and genders and locations and all of that. So I can go in here and target this one post to these people. I won't do it just now, but that's... You don't get that button if you did not turn that on in the settings. Remember I mentioned it in the settings. It's not on by default. You have to go back to the settings to turn that on if you don't see that. I'll get back to boost post in a moment. And we have visibility. This is much more for a personal account. Do I make this public? Do I make this private? You really are not going to set your business pages to private. You're going to try to reach as many people as possible. Yes, you could create a private page where it really is only accessible by VIPs or, or whatever you want like that. That takes a little bit more setup that I'm not going to quite go into. I'm assuming your page will be public. At least demographic is similar to what Then we've got publish, but if you if you don't click publish and instead you click the triangle, you have a few more options. Schedule, backdate, save draft. So if I want to fully craft this post later, I can save the draft and it'll be saved over to our publishing tools. I can backdate it, which is similar to that one over here, and then I can also schedule it. So if I click schedule, I can set this to actually be visible starting in in about 10 minutes or a day or, or whatever. There is a limit. I don't think you can go super far advanced, but you can schedule things, you know, a week at a a week ahead and such. It looks like I can go kind of far. Like this one will, won't be visible until 4th of July. So I can have something scheduled from now and it will come out on the 4th of July. If I do set a starting time, if I activated the feature in settings, I would have scheduled post end date. So if I start this on today and make it last for a week, then the post will go away from the visibility. It won't delete it, it'll still be accessible back in your publish screen, but then this will no longer be visible to people, and that might be useful. You put out that coupon and you don't want people to try to use the coupon a month later. It makes it disappear. So I'm not going to schedule anything, but if you want to, it's hidden under the little white triangle. And supposedly here on the top right corner, if there were multiple people controlling this account, you can switch between them. That should uh, automatically be set to your business right there. If not, you can change it. But again, uh, I've done it a couple of times where I accidentally posted as the wrong person, but I have avoided that by switching back and forth with the triangle up here. Anyway, there's a lot we can do here. I'm going to publish that. And now all my zero followers would see this. Well, actually, I have one, right? Victor Campos liked it. Mm. But um, 
I published something. What I can also do is I can attach a link. Why do that? If you search how to use Peach Like a Pro on any search engine, our blog shows up higher than anyone else. Cool. So um, let's say this blog post. I want to share it there. So you can take any address and paste it into here, even though there's nothing that says link, like it does on Google+. If you paste any link, what it should do is automatically create a post with a little thumbnail and the description that comes from the site, which you can edit. If your description there doesn't quite make sense or is too long, you can change it. You can click to edit any of that. Right. So that's very cool. Just take that address, paste it in, and it'll make a little preview of it. You can still further add stuff, such as saying here, oops, saying also, for example, from our friends over at PMD Interactive, here's, a, here's something for you. From our friends at PMD Interactive. Notice here I can also attach or tag another entity on Facebook. You might do it automatically sometimes, but to force it, you're writing something, you write the at symbol, and you start writing the other company name, and it should pop up here. And then what will happen is that that company will get a notification where then that company might promote you and you're building cross traffic. So this works because I can post something and also tag this college. The mm -hmm. college gets uh, notified and then they may share it and reach more people. You can attach as many as you want, but be careful because that can get spammy. If you attach, you know, 10 other companies to this post just to let them know about it, you might get the button that says report because you're like spam and they'll report you. My friends at PMD Interactive. Victor, is there a way to go around um, if we're doing Kissy and, and then the company name or whoever you finally tag does not ground or engage you ever have that problem? And I noticed yeah. that you have to go sometimes it works if you go to like and like it first and then maybe mm -hmm. Yeah sometimes uh, sometimes this doesn't work as well as it could. Like I'm trying to do you know Victor Campos and it's not the right Victor Campos there's too many even though it only shows these. So yeah sometimes, sometimes it's not that it doesn't easy. Even give you an option that you can't is there a way around that? Not quite, but how you're saying about giving a like first sometimes works. I've had a hard time with Southwestern College. I've been trying to add Southwestern College once in a while, and it, it just doesn't come up. The one in Kansas does. So I don't quite have an answer for that. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And the problem sometimes is that that particular company might spell their name different than what you think. So you might have to try variations of that name. You might have to go to that page first and like it and check their name is exactly right, which is going to be the name right here. If you're not spelling it exactly how they have it, it might not show up. See right here. I've got this one, and I've got this one. All right, so here's another type of post. Again, what to post is a little harder to teach because everyone is so different, uh, what your particular product is. But really, you're going to think a lot about visual content or something interesting or something that's different than your competition. So you will, you will check out your competition. Let's say I'm going to post this so my followers can see it about competition, you you want to follow other pages on Facebook to get that inspiration. 
because the confusing thing here is I'm on my page and I'm seeing what I'm posting but if my page follows another bakery I can see what they're posting if I go up to the home button if you go to your home button this will show you what you've posted but this would show you what your the content of those that you're following Here it's pretty empty, it's just my stuff. But I would want to follow other accounts. And maybe as a small business, what might be useful to you to do a little self promotion here, if you go up on the search and you search for PMD Interactive and you go to my company, we share all of this stuff for small businesses and something interesting and new social media stuff. So if you if you search on top here PMD Interactive and you find my company and you give a like, Basically, what that means is when we post something, you might see it, it might be useful, you might learn something new, you might be have something valuable or an insight. And as a company, I would still also follow other companies on Facebook to get that inspiration, to see what the competition is doing. Yes, your competition would see that it says, Victor's Bakery just followed you. So if you don't want that to be known, you, you don't want to follow them. You just want to you know, stalk them this way. You want to check out their page without a follow, without a like, and then they won't know that you like them. But if you don't care about that, like a page, and when you like a page, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna like my page, and then what I'll see is, you know, you have some options, but what I'll see is after I like a page and I go back to my home screen, I'm gonna start to see the content of the pages that I've liked. Maybe not right away, but you'll start to see the, the content. You can only create a link though from a page that you own, obviously, from one of your other pages. You know, like you were front of friends of human the interaction. No, I, I could have I could have made a link over to Victoria's Secret. It was suggesting me to do that. So in theory, you should be able to link your page to any page. Although the question over here was you she couldn't find her page or the page. That happens too. It's kind of a weird system. This is a link to the page. This active link right here that I posted is a link back to our Facebook page. How did you get the active link? You add the at symbol. So when you start liking pages, you will see their content eventually. And the point of that is for inspiration. See what the competition is doing and then get ideas for you to do something. So again, just a little self-advertising, but if, if you find it useful, we do post a lot of stuff to keep up to date with social media and business and marketing and such. So you can just search for us on PMD Interactive and hit that like button, right? Now, obviously here I could drum up some amount of likes by asking people, but that's not going to be the most effective way of course, because you can't reach a thousand people in person. So if I go back to my uh, my company, your company, the name of your company link takes you back to your main timeline here where you see your stuff. And the home button takes you back to the screen where you see all the new stuff on Facebook. But anyway, let's go back to your company page. Um, And again, posting this, I did mention in this class the website uh, socialmediaexaminer.com. If not, socialmediaexaminer.com. It's just another of the many websites out there on this topic of social media. They're a blog. They publish something every day, multiple times a day on a variety of topics of social media. They're going to keep you up to date here on the latest Facebook changes, on the latest social networks, tips and advice, and all of that. And so they've got a Facebook page too. If you like them on Facebook, you will see the latest content on your home screen. That's the point of these likes. All, all along, 
the, the history of Facebook is that in 2000, I believe it's 2004, Facebook was invented in Harvard, I believe, and then it was only available for people on the Harvard campus to connect with each other. Then eventually it expanded out to other universities. So someone in Harvard could talk to someone at UCSD and Facebook. Then it expanded to other educational institutes. So then high schoolers could connect with each other on Facebook. And then eventually it expanded to anyone. So mom and dad could get on Facebook to see what Johnny's doing on Facebook. So everyone had the people could get on Facebook. Then eventually um, Facebook said, OK, we're seeing that companies are getting on Facebook. We never thought about that, but companies are getting on Facebook. We can make money off of that. So then companies now are able to get on Facebook and they set it up so that when you like a company's page, you would see their stuff on your home screen here. That was the traditional way. And as things got bigger and bigger and bigger and more crowded on Facebook, they changed the algorithm little by little. So that me as a person, Facebook thinks that me as a person, I would rather see the stuff of my friends and family than some company. Even though I liked Nike and McDonald's and Chipotle and p and Interactive, I probably want to see the stuff of my friends and family more often than those companies. So Facebook changed the algorithm and that's useful for people because I don't want to see that company stuff. I want to see what Aunt Gertrude put on Facebook. That's good for people. But it's bad for businesses, isn't it? Because it used to be that simply someone liking your page was a guarantee that they would see your stuff. But now they've changed the game so that even if you have a hundred followers, a thousand, ten thousand followers, you're not really going to reach those ten thousand anymore. Even though in the old days it was guaranteed. I don't know what the percentage is. No one really knows. They changed the algorithm. And it probably changes on a case-by-case -case basis. McDonald's is probably going to, their stuff is going to show up for more people more often because they're such a big company. But myself, even if I've got a thousand likes, that doesn't mean I'm going to reach a thousand people, unfortunately, even though they click the like, like in the old days. Well, it's very convenient because then Facebook gives us the ability to actually boost our post and get it seen by more people. Boost your post to reach more people. Right now I have one like, so if I engage in boosting a post, more people can see it. And if I've got already a thousand likes, those 1,000 might not really see it. If I boost my post, more people could see it. But this is not free. This is what we need to talk about if we're going to be serious about Facebook. The days of doing this all for free are gone. Facebook has stacked the deck against companies. And yes, it's cynical, but it's capitalism. The company wants to make money. And the way it makes money is by us paying Facebook to show our posts to more people. Because a few years ago, this didn't exist. And our post would reach those hundred likes. But now, who knows what it is? It might be one out of a hundred likes would see it. Twenty. I don't know. It's trade secrets. Only the algorithm knows. Only the engineers of Facebook know. But what I do know is if you pay for it, you will reach people. Yes, that is cynical, but that's advertising, that's marketing, of course. You have got that uh, item in the mail, not for free. The college had to pay, the post office, or UPS, or whatever, to get that to you, to print this. This thing isn't free. No company is going to let us print this for free. Some company was paid for us to print this, to get it to you, to take our classes. And so the same thing here. Facebook, really, the way to be effective on Facebook, I have to say, honestly, point blank, is you have to pay for it. As little as a dollar, as much as a thousand dollars, whatever your budget is. So obviously, McDonald's is paying $10 million a year on Facebook to reach more people. Obviously, Chipotle is also paying $100 a day. Whatever. These companies are spending money to reach a billion and a half people. And it works. And if you are morally opposed to it, you will be able to reach an audience in the free route that's going to be uphill battle, pushing a boulder with one hand and your sword in the other. 
So we really do need to talk about then boosting posts. And that's a big discussion we'll have right after the break. Let's say 25. Let's gather our thoughts and at 835 we will talk about boosting posts, Facebook ads, and all that good stuff.